we're recording it. You just click it. Yeah. Because that's how it goes. Well, hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest is Lori Neighbor, and we're going to hear an update from her. She's been on the show before. I found her on YouTube, and I found her just so real and relatable and delightful and beautiful, and I want to know what she's up to. So if you haven't seen the previous episode, I can link to it, but she calls herself a starch long hauler. Nothing to do with COVID, but we're going to find out more about what she's been up to and how she helps other people, especially women, eat starch and lose weight, which is less. so many people are still afraid of. Please welcome Lori to the show. It's very nice to see you again. Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to catch up with you all and with Chef AJ and welcome to my home in Mexico. Here I am. And I try to give you at least a little bit of view of this, of what's out there. Nice. In case people didn't see the first show, how the heck did you end up in Mexico? We moved. Okay. Well, my, um, my family and I moved to Mexico in 2004. I am a wife, mother, grandmother, and I am a pastor's wife. So we moved down here to learn Spanish. And then we ended up same here. It's been 18 going on 19 years. That's fantastic. Do you love it? Yes. Yes, I do. I do. I do love it. Is it pretty easy to eat starch in Mexico? It is. Yes. There's potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Huh? Potatoes, corn, tortillas. It's fantastic. Yes. And I love the flavors. That's the flavor that I've been in lately is, is the Mexican, the flavors, it's the cumin, and garlic and onions and cilantro and tomatillo, which are the little green tomatoes. And so, yeah, you know, I kind I, of, I've, I've always said salsa should be a food group because it makes everything taste better, whether it's rice or beans or potatoes. I mean, I love salsa. It does. It's true. It's true. And I try not to burn my stomach out, as I say, by eating it too spicy. I really like the spice, but my stomach is still like, Ooh, don't need so much spice, but I love it. And they told us that if we eat chili, that we will, would learn to speak Spanish quickly. So hopefully we've done a fairly good job at learning how to speak Spanish. Oh my God. I hope that works for me because I've always wanted to learn Spanish and I do eat chili. My favorite is pasilla. Have you ever had the pasilla salsa? The one that's like almost black. What do they, do they put it on tacos or what? Well, yeah, it's just, I mean, you can actually get it in the store. I actually sprout started carrying it, but it's, it's pasilla. It's like salsa, but it's made from a, a roasted pasilla pepper. So it's very dark. It's almost dark brown or almost black. And it's my favorite. I love I'm, that. Stuff. I'm not sure if I saw the chili, then I might recognize it. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, you know, each, each region or each zone, each state, they have their own you know, just like in the States, they have their own food. Like we have Cajun food from Louisiana and it's the same thing with the, the, the food and the tortillas and all that in each area, it's a little bit different. So maybe because you're up there um, north of the border, you get more of that. And I, cause I'm not sure unless it's a, a salsa that they stick on the tacos or I'm not sure. This but, good on everything. Okay. So if people aren't familiar with you, your story or YouTube channel, Tell us about your journey and how did you come across Dr. McDougall and his work living in Mexico? Okay. Well, back in 2018, I had a friend who kind of sized me up from church and uh, meaning that she could tell I weighed approximately the same amount that she weighed. And she approached me and said, this next year in 2019, I'd like to lose 50 pounds. Do you want to do it with me? And I was like, Sure. Uh, I'm just the type of person that is a little bit competitive and it, that's all I need is just one person to motivate me. And I like to win. <laughs> I really like to win. So I, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you a picture because some, I knew it was going to, it would come up. I'm going to show you a picture that my friend took of me and it mortified me. This was, so I, I knew I was uh, needing to do something about it. So you want to see this? Absolutely. So, I don't tell me if you can see it. I was a big girl. Yeah, still beautiful. You remind me of the actress Naomi Watts for some reason. Yeah, yep. You told me that. I but, don't know. Yeah. But thank you. She's she's a cutie. Yeah. So, as are you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you were beautiful, but you were fifty pounds heavier. Oh yeah, at least. So, 
uh, she did her thing. I did my thing. And at the time I was going to go with, uh, with uh, excuse me, as uh, fruitarian and uh, excuse me, let me get a drink. <laughs> so I started out as a fruitarian and I was drinking a lot of watermelon water, making um, smoothies. And we live here in Mexico so I could get fresh coconuts. And my husband, we'd go down to the big market and we'd buy fresh coconuts and he would take the machete and he'd get me the, the milk of the, or the water. And then at the time I was using even the meat. And, and the problem with that is that as a fruitarian, I was not satiated. So I would be doing well. I was getting way too many calories by blending all my food. And then about two or three in the afternoon, my, my appetite was just, it was like, how do you say ravishing or it was just ferocious. I just wanted some meat or I wanted something that would make me feel full. And so what I didn't realize is that I needed starch. That's what I was missing. I was missing the starches. So I was a fat, uh, how do I say? I was a fat fruitarian. I was a cheating fat fruitarian because I would cheat. Somebody would bring home chicken from the chicken stand and like, I think I'm just going to eat this. And it, it doesn't, it's not a good idea. So I know some people like to, to eat just plain fruitarian. I don't know how they do it. Uh, but I think, I don't know. I, I like to eat too much. That's the problem. So basically it was kind of a, a progress. Then I was turned on to eating uh, raw, all raw. And that was, I had a lot more energy when I started eating all raw, but I was eating, starting to eat the vegetables too. I was reintroducing vegetables. And then I started intermittent fasting. And then I kind of got to a point point where I was losing weight, but then I kind of got to a point where I wasn't losing as much weight. And then I got turned and saw Chef AJ. And the first time I saw Chef AJ, I mean, here is this beautiful lady. She's so tiny and skinny. And I was just so intimidated by seeing how thin she is. I thought, oh, she could never relate to me. That was my first impression, but then so wrong, just completely wrong because when I started listening to Chef AJ and I bought her books, I found out that Chef AJ and I have a whole lot in common, a lot, a lot in common. And I highly recommend that you buy her books and process. And because I'm nervous, my brain isn't, that's the latest uh, updated version that you have, which I have my, my um, digital copy so I can look at the recipes. But I also bought the audio books, which it's it remind me again, there's two of the books, right? What's the name of the other book? I apologize. The, the Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss? Yes, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. I listened to that and found, oh my goodness, this, this gal has so much in common with me. Uh, I'm processed because I live here in Mexico, so I'm always trying to make everything scratch. So I don't use processed foods. The Basically, the only thing processed that I have in my pantry is some tomato paste and some condiments like ketchup, which I could make my ketchup from scratch, but then it's coming from the tomato paste. And then if I want to make tomato paste, it's just a big pain. So much easier just to buy a can of tomato paste. So, so when I then could eat potatoes again, then the rest of the weight falls off. And I'm thinking, this is glorious. I can, I can eat French fries. I can eat lots of French fries and I can still lose weight. And I, I, I make my food for what I even eat in a day for you. If you can believe that because I get so, I get so nervous that I, um, I didn't doing I, great. Don't get nervous. I didn't want to, I didn't want to have to cook and, and try to cook and talk at the same time. That, that's okay. But would people just love to know what people eat to lose weight and to maintain okay. their weight loss. So let me, let me tell you what happened. Cause it was in August of 2020 was the first time that I was on the Chef AJ live show. And it was just such a privilege. I probably found Chef AJ, probably made a comment on one of her videos. And then the next thing I know it is she's writing to me and she's asking me if I want to appear on her show. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Chef AJ is like the it. She is the it chef of the plant-based world. She's with all of the, the greatest doctors of the plant-based world. And she's talking to me, you know, I'm just hidden away down in Mexico where in my house, nobody, you know, 
but she finds me and I, it was such an honor and such a privilege to be invited the first time. And so the story went back then was that my cousin who was she had like a hundred pounds that she wanted to lose. She's now in her eighties. She had contacted me because I started talking about, Hey, I'm losing weight, eating potatoes. Look at this. So I had friends and some lady friends from church and from that have, that have known me for all of my life writing and saying, Hey, what are you eating? And so my cousin in particular asked that I would start making cooking videos. So that was the reason why I started the YouTube channel which is Lori Neighbor, I'll Never Die Again, because I was so excited back then. I was just like, I'll never die again. I never have to die again because you can eat this way. It's fantastic. You feel saturated. So I began to make cooking videos. And of course, I don't know what I'm doing. And maybe that was even more funny or entertaining. I don't know. But I'm just trying to start making cooking videos to show my family and my friends. And then I had a little uh, Facebook support group for them. And um, so I did that for a while. Then I came on the show with, with Chef AJ. And then I kind of just took a break. I took a break from social media and making videos for like a year and a half. Well, right after uh, the Chef AJ live show, wasn't too much after, I actually amputated part of my finger. <laughs> oh my so God. Oh, I know, I know. So it was this finger. I was, I was cutting uh, one of those, uh, one of my potatoes and it just caught it wrong. And so I just pressed my finger on it like this. It was still somewhat attached, but from what a nurse friend said I had, it was actually considered an amputation. <laughs> I don't know because it needs so many stitches or what it was, but anyway, got, got medical attention, it healed back up. And so now I, I use a kind of an ugly glove. I call it, it's the, um, it's a safe grip glove. Oh yeah. Well, Everybody should use that if they're doing a mandolin. If, and, and if you're cutting like me, so I am, um, I use this every time I cut dice up anything. And I'll tell you, it's not really pretty to look at in a video. In fact, I think I used it once and somebody was like, what the heck is that? <laughs> it's kind of ugly. So yeah. Anyway, so about a year and a half goes by and, um, let me, let me back up to last year. It was if, about June. I'm like maintaining my weight pretty much all that time. And I get a little lazy and I decide I'd like to spend a little more time with my husband. He's really busy all the time. And my husband loves breakfast and he loves to go out for breakfast. So I started going out to breakfast with my husband. And normally I carry my food with me. I'll get up, prepare whatever it is that I'm going to have. I put it in my thermoses and I just, I just go, I just haul my food with me, but I decided I was going to be lazy and not do that. And within six months, six months, I gained back 20 pounds from the oil that was in the food. I was still eating vegan, but there was oil in the food. When I eat out, uh, I'd go and have chilaquiles, no sin lactios, which means without cheese. And I would have a little bit of their refried beans and I would have their totopos, which is their, their corn chips, which are fried in oil. The sauce is fine, but there was this oil that was sneaking into my diet. Uh, so then kind of Thanksgiving time last year, I thought, well, once in, a, once in a while, you know, for the holidays or special occasion, it's okay to have, a, you know, a treat. So instead of making vegan treats, I allowed the dairy back in my house and I was making, this was for my family, of course. <laughs> so I was making them croissants. I was making them cheesecake. I was making, and I had extra whipping cream because you go to Costco, you can't just buy a little pint. You're going to get those two big old, whatever they're called, quarts of, uh, of whipping cream. And I was putting it in my coffee. No gained another 10 pounds over the holidays. So come January of this, of this very year, I was, had gained back nearly 30 pounds. I said, okay, that's it. Went to the, uh, where they draw blood. What's it called? <laughs> a lab, went to a lab, had my blood drawn. So I had all my blood work. My cholesterol was 239. That's ridiculous. 239. So strict 
McDougal type, you know, strict chef AJ for about what, 20 some days, went back and had my cholesterol drawn. And guess what it was? 140. Well, I wish it was 170. Well, that's still pretty good. That was that was great. Yeah, one it was down to 170, and I it would be better if it was 140, but uh yeah, that was pretty phenomenal to see that quick of a change. So it is true, you know, when they say to start eating eating right correctly, what our body needs, we can start reversing these issues that we you know cause on ourselves. And I also lost like 11 pounds. So what I did is I turned back on the YouTube channel and thought, I got to get some accountability here. So if I go on to YouTube and every week I'm reposting, you know, updates about my weight loss, then it'll keep me accountable. Well, I got to thinking when I turn my channel back on, I know that someone's going to find me and that someone is going to be my weight loss mom. Do you know who my weight loss mom is? No. Chef AJ. <laughs> Chef AJ is not old enough to be my physical mom, but she is a great weight loss mom. What does a mom do? She kind of gets after you and she says, hey, what are you doing? And so that's exactly what happened within three days. Chef AJ was like, hey, where are you? It's about time for you to come back on my show, don't you think? Isn't it and funny I how I have like a sixth sense about that with people? <laughs> I know. I was like, that is so amazing. And I want to put a plug in for Chef AJ's groups, because if you are able to get involved in any of her her weight loss accountability, accountability groups, you want to do that because she's awesome. She's amazing. And I personally think what's happened is because she had shared before that some people, they, um, she contacts them on YouTube because she liked to interview them and they're saying no. I personally think that they're so shocked that she would reach out to them, that they don't even believe that the invitation is real, but it is really real. And it's such a privilege. Oh. Especially people have, you know, their books or their testimonies that they want to share and get the word out. But I, I have learned over this time that is regarding, because um, I'll give you a, an update on my weight loss. Maybe I should go there first and then I'll go back to where I'm wanting to talk. But um, and, and so this was such a great goal setter for me because she didn't just say, hey, let's have you on the show next month. It was like, no, let's have you on the show in June. I'm thinking, oh, that gives me time to get my act together. It, get, it got me motivated again to get where I need to be. And so that I'm not an, an embarrassment, correct? I want to be a good example. So, so I'm going along. I'm doing, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And then Chef AJ gets on line and she's like selling this amazing bundle, weight loss bundle. And in the bundle has some big treasures. It's not available now if you didn't get it. You're, you're too late. Maybe she'll have another one next year or something. But this weight loss bundle included a, a Zoom call. It ended up, I got a, a Zoom call with Dr. McDougall. So yeah, it was pretty cool. So that day um, I get on there and I'm thinking, I've got questions. So we're in the group, you know, and, and everything. And, and I'm just like, I've got three months until I'm on Chef AJ's show and, I, and I've got this goal. And, and Dr. McDougall is like, you can do it. And I'll tell you how. And um, I told him about being a fat cheating fraternian and he loved that. So would you like what, to sometime give a testimonial to Dr. McDougall when he's on and tell him how he helped you? I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to do that. And he, anyway, so he liked my, that it was the fat cheating or the former fat cheating fraternian. And so I actually can write to Dr. McDougal. I put that in the, in this title that it's the fat cheating, former fat cheating fraternian. And he answers me like right back. He's amazing. So I appreciate that so much about him. Okay. So I was trying so hard to lose 20 more, well, it was like 30 pounds uh, from the time it was in March until today. I was trying so hard. Uh, and he told me I could do it and I believe him. The thing is, is that I am not as physically active as 
normal people. I just have some, uh, there's some physical reasons for it. And he did tell me because of the neurological, the neurological damage that I have, that basically once I've gone onto the program for about three, four months, that if I'm not, I have not improved anymore, that's pretty much, that's my new baseline that where I'm going to be. So I'm not going to get worse. I am better, but I'm, you know, do you understand what I'm saying? That I'm just not going to be able to get where I was because of the horrible, the horrible lifestyle that I lived before I started eating plant-based. So I, that's fine. I can still have a great life and it's much better than it was for sure. Anyway, so I was uh, trying to do Dr. McDougall's, is it rapid? There, there's like three different. Um, well, there's the Star Solution. There's the Maximum Weight Loss. There's Mary's Mini. Right. But there's one that he doesn't talk a whole lot about. And it's the, the it's supposed to be the quickest way. And the, and the quickest way is to eat more, more raw, eat more raw and try to, um, oh, what was it? Well, it's, yeah. Anyway, it's eating more raw right now. My mind just went blank. But, uh, and so I was eating, um, lettuce wraps, like tons and tons of lettuce wraps. But uh, because I, I still wanted to eat like one pound of starch and that's not, that is not like normal for everybody. I know Chef AJ, she eats like three pounds of sweet potatoes every <laughs> Not in one sitting, but about, about in two sittings. Yeah, I mean, starch cannot, this is the thing. I, people still don't believe us, Lori, that you can eat starch and get trim. Oh, it's fantastic. You, you proved it that it wasn't starch that caused you to gain weight. It was your restaurant experiment. It was the oil. It was the dairy. You can't get fat eating starch. It's one calorie per gram potatoes are there. It's just people just, just, I don't know if they don't get it or they refuse to accept it, but uh, people are asking like, well, so can you never eat at restaurants? I think that it depends what your goals are because most restaurants use more sugar, fat, and salt than you ever would at home. And what people don't realize is even when a restaurant, and I learned this, I couldn't believe this, like even when a restaurant has their nutritional information, like let's say, let's say it's a wrap or a, or a bowl, and it says the amount of calories and fat, it doesn't include the amount that they're using the oil, like say to saute it, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they can do whatever they want. So you never really know how many calories are fat. I mean, unless it's maybe a dry salad or something, you know what I'm saying? And, and there's always oil on the grill and in the pot, cooking pots, they don't go and get a new pot for you. So, I mean, you're, you're going to eat like 500 calories more at a restaurant than you would for the same meal at home. It's guaranteed. Yeah, that's true. Like uh, in my videos, I try to vlog and throw in there what I eat, but I'm not like just cooking. It was just really, this time has really just been vlogging my experience and kind of keeping myself accountable by telling, you know, what the weight loss is, or if I, if I was just, uh, just kind of doing that equilibrium thing and not losing that week, but it showed, you know, in a week or two later. Uh, but we, we've been going to a steakhouse, my family and I go to a steakhouse, but obviously that's, I don't, I'm not eating steak. But I did find that they do serve a baked potato. A baked potato, like if I if I don't take my food with me from home, usually I can find a baked potato. This uh, the first time we ate at this particular restaurant, this particular steakhouse, I had ordered two baked potatoes with just natural with everything, you know, nothing on it, uh, and it was great. This last time we were there, which was on Sunday, I said this thing is fried in oil. It, I mean, so I had to send it back. And they brought me back another potato that didn't have, they didn't put it on the grill. They said they put it in the grill and it was in the oil. So the whole thing was just oil all around it. And I could just taste it in my mouth. You know, I, I, I didn't want it. So um, wait, 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 did you, something came up that I wanted to tell you. But anyway, um, hopefully it'll, it'll come to me. <laughs> Boom. Oh, and what else? Ask me another question. So then maybe it'll come back. Um, well, okay are you back doing videos now on your youtube channel i, I think you are i i yes I think. yeah i'm keeping track what i want to do from today is, is what i'm wanting to do is to do at least a once once a month accountability checkup and then come after the holiday i want to maintain this weight or if i lose that's fine uh, i want to maintain the weight i'm at now or lose uh, but I'm not going to be like stressing out about it. And then come after the holidays, I'm hoping that I will have not gained any weight 
and I can still try once again to focus in and try to lose those 20 pounds. I, this seems to be just the spot that I'm wanting to stay. I, I don't know why I, I could stand to lose 20 more pounds, but um, I had a thing that happened about a month ago where I had a really bad UTI, urinary tract infection, and I, I just made some mistakes. I should have been drinking my herbal tea. I, I wasn't, and I ended up in the ER. And then afterwards, I just kind of, I was down at my lowest weight and I've been maintaining in that little area there within a couple of pounds, but I just haven't uh, kind of lost my momentum as far as just, uh, as far as going and losing more. So what I did lose this year, I did lose 30 pounds. Okay, I did lose 30 pounds and I got that weight off that I had regained. So I have no intentions of going back. I'm like, no, I've been there. I, I don't want to do that again. I would rather keep going and um, see if I can get down to the goal weight. My goal weight is 125. So let me show you what I've been eating. You want to see some, see what I've been eating? I absolutely uh, looking do. at my. And I, I'm just telling my friend, I have a friend, I'm like, this is a lot of food. I'm like, can you believe I eat that? And she said, yes, I've seen you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> She's seen me eat it. So um, right now, because I, I found a peanut, okay, I should, I wanted to talk about things being compliant and non-compliant. This isn't exactly compliant. <laughs> if you're wanting to lose, do things, be compliant, cut out the sugars, cut out the salts, uh, cut out the nuts. Come on, people. Cut it out. Um, and that was one thing that kind of got me into, a, uh, I got into a little bit of trouble with my seeds. I use seeds for seed cycling, balancing my hormones. And I had cut my seeds out because I wanted to lose this weight, but it dropped my estrogen too low because I don't use any processed foods. It dropped my estrogen down too low. And that can uh, cause a woman to get UTIs if their estrogen is too low. So I had to reincorporate just a tablespoon of my seeds to bring the estrogen level back up. So I used to just always eat, eat my uh, oatmeal cereal as a dessert, but lately I found um, peanut butter cocoa powder. That stuff is ridiculous. <laughs> Isn't it ridiculous? Do you, you guys can care. But, but how are you eating it? I put a tablespoon in my oatmeal. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. <laughs> oh, good. It tastes like you're eating Reese's peanut butter cup cereal. And then I uh, also, this is not compliant if you're trying to lose weight. I, I use my sugar of choice is maple syrup, but don't eat, don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. So I would, uh, if I'm just maintaining and not trying to lose weight, I would put a tablespoon of maple syrup or cut it out or just like a, Dr. McDougall would say, just drizzle a little bit, or if you're doing Chef AJ style, just stay away from it. Your your uh, palate will adjust. Yeah, oh, I why, just, not, why not just use a banana for sweetening? Yeah, that's true too. Use a banana or dates, yeah. right? Paste. Um, I did remember what I wanted to say earlier is to talk about Dr. Lyle and how his um, explaining how our what our body does. Because sometimes when we're trying to lose weight, we get ladies, we get so frustrated because we are like, Oh, I lost five pounds. You know, initially you lose the five pounds and then I'm not losing anymore. Well, we have, this is Dr. Lyle is so great about explaining that we do have an equilibrium. So, and our body is like a boat. So if you have a bunch of weight to lose, and then you drop some of that weight, your body's going to be fluctuating a little bit. So give yourself some time for your body's equilibrium to catch up because you're not actually uh on a plateau it, it helped a lot and it kept I mean I was steadily losing this whole entire time this whole this year except for like I said when I, I got sick about a month ago and so uh that helped a lot it helped a lot to understand the body's equilibrium and also because between you and Dr. Lyle you talk about um people saying I can't lose any weight I can't lose any weight, but if you actually look at what they're eating, they're cheating somewhere. I love it that he's just so blunt. He just, he just says it, you know, it says they're cheating somewhere and you're, they're eating something that's non-compliant. So for me, I need to take away any seeds or just maybe a teaspoon of seeds instead of the tablespoon 
of seeds so that I, my estrogen isn't dropping too low, I would probably, instead of eating one cup of oats, this is one cup of oats uh, with a cup of water, I would eat half of that. And now, let's see, this is a couple of, uh, of really big potatoes. Oops, is it dripping? <laughs> I dripped it with my, um, with my veggies that I stir fried. So I have broccoli, some zucchini, onion, and bell pepper. I just love bell pepper. It's uh, seasoned with salt and Cajun, Cajun powder. Um, did I say salt? No, or pepper, I meant to say pepper. I do, I do add a little bit of salt. That salt is not is non-compliant if you're doing Chef AJ style. So you can use, other, there's other things. Um, here, this is the rest of my food for the day right here in this bowl. This is kind of, I tried to do half and half where it's the potatoes and the, the veggies. And so I don't know, I'm guesstimating that that, what, right, that right there is a couple of pounds of potatoes, but if I'm still hungry and I want something else, I'm still gonna eat something. I'm not gonna go to bed hungry. You don't have to. So there's my air fried potatoes. Well, those look amazing and dip them in a little <laughs> salsa. Yeah, I've got my, again, non-compliant because it's got a little ketchup um, with some Valentina sauce, which is a hot sauce. And I just mix that up and I, I really do enjoy that. Yeah, I, you know, don't really be worry or be, you know, non-compliant according to whose standards, gold hammers. I mean, there are people that for whom salt isn't a trigger and it doesn't seem to affect their weight. So I always tell people do the least restrictive program you can do that'll get you the results you seek. So, I mean, I have condiments occasionally with salt. I don't, you know, be, I mean, but when I was losing weight, I think I was really toeing the line, you know? Yeah, I I went to go try to find another uh, group, you know, whether it be, I think it was like a starch solution group. I was just looking for our support groups on Facebook and I found one, I got kicked out of it. Yeah, they, they can be really, uh, I, I, I've long time ago been in some of those groups. I couldn't believe it. In fact, I had, I wrote to Dr. McDougall because the argument was about tortillas, corn tortillas that was not, and their group that was not allowed. And I was like, Dr. McDougall, um, I'm in this group and they're saying that you said we can't have corn tortillas. And basically, you know, Dr. McDougall is like, um, what is it? Bread is life to us. And that some people it's bread and some people is corn tortillas. So if you can eat it and still lose weight, go ahead and enjoy it. You know, but I just thought that was the funniest thing. I was like, oh my gosh, they kicked me out. Yeah, nothing really? like a supportive Facebook group, huh? And he's not involved in any of those groups. You no, know? no, no, no. It was just some gals, they were just really enthusiastic. But um, I mean, but to kick you out, they couldn't even give you a warning. I mean, that's just, that's why I don't like Facebook. I was, I was just out of there. They didn't, they didn't, I don't know. But I feel sorry for the other people that are in there because they could be in, enjoying a corn tortilla. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I mean, if, 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 if it doesn't have anything, I mean, they are a little bit more calorically dense than say just eating corn, but you know. Well, and the funny thing about me is that because I was still, you know, I'm always experimenting on myself. I did this, uh, like I said, it was the most rigid way. It's, there's only about a paragraph of it in Dr. McDougall's book, uh, which is the, how to, I don't know. I just can't think of it. It's the original one, the original book that he wrote. It's just uh, talking about you, isn't it the, what's it called? I'm wanting to know what it was called. Uh, the original book of Dr. McDougall? Yeah, the, um, well, how to, Maximum Weight Loss. Yeah, Maximum Weight Loss. That's my favorite, I think. But there was three different methods of losing. One is, you know, you, you're going to eat two thirds starch. One is 50-50. And then the other is one third starch, correct? which is supposed to be the most rapid way of weight loss, but it's really hard. He, he says, you know, not everybody are, is going to do that. He's going to, and uh, so it's not talked about, but I did try it. And what I found was that I wasn't losing weight any quick, you know, any faster. I think the reason why is because I typically want at least a pound of starch a day. And I'm not going to eat less than that. So it didn't matter if I kept adding more raw vegetables into it or whatever. It's 
I still was just steadily losing the same amount. So when, once I saw, you know, I tried it for like a month and I was like, okay, I'm not losing any quicker by doing this method. I started eating French fries again, <laughs> you know, things like that. No, I, so, Dr. Lyle just said the other day, we don't, it's not our job to decide how much we eat, just what we eat. And then we don't have to worry about how much. Yeah. Right food. He, People, I never measured anything when I initially lost the 58 pounds. I didn't measure anything. I didn't want to. I had been stuck with counting calories all, you know, the years before that. I was tired of it. And uh, this method is so much easier. It is, it takes a while to get, to grasp all of the information. But if people, you know, just trust the process that it's going to all work out in the end, they're going to really enjoy losing weight this way. And it's sustainable. It's completely sustainable. It's delicious. It's just a matter of thinking your starch is your meat. Your starches are your meat, your rice, your corn, your beans, your, your potatoes, your sweet potatoes, that's your meat. And then what I like to do is like, okay, I've made my, my potatoes in my instant pot. I love to graze. So I made my food and then um, I'm eating the same thing, but I switch up the flavor throughout the day with my sauces. So I'm changing, switching it up with maybe using Cholula sauce or maybe using Valentina sauce, which these are Mexican hot sauces, or maybe I'm going to add cumin to it. And maybe I've, okay, now it's getting towards the end of the day. I want a little ketchup and mustard flavor on it. So it's more like a, you know, hamburger type flavor to it. So that's, that is what I do. It's not going to be for everybody else, but that's, this is what's working for me. And I realize that people get frustrated. They're saying, show us what you eat in a day. Make us videos and, and show us uh, your recipes. Make it. I, I don't want to spend my time doing all of that. And so if they can find people like Chef AJ that are willing to do that, boy, you guys do not know how fortunate you are to have Chef AJ because she's willing and she's out there making the videos. And she's, I mean, how many videos you're, you're the video queen. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do it every day. So <laughs> sometimes multiple times a day. Absolutely. The most, the most I've ever done was five a day. That was very tiring. Hey, Lori, if, if it's okay to ask you this, Linda, who's actually almost 80 and looks incredible, wanted to know how old you are. I am 53. Yeah, you look great. Thank you. Amazing. Um, and there's a question, where do you get the peanut butter cocoa powder? Do you, do you have it to show us by any chance? And you're able to get that in Mexico? Yeah, my friend will grab it. It's on the island over there. I bought it at La Comer, which is a grocery store. It's from the States, right? No. Well, yeah, it's, from, it's imported. It's from the States. But there is a grocery store in our area, in the Guadalajara and in Manzanillo area called La Comer. And they have imported items. I am still back today because I brought this from the coast and it's empty. So I'm going to be going into town to see if I can find it at one of the little import stores that are here. Tell, tell me the name of it and I'll try to grab a link for people. What is the name of the company? In English. Oh, it's because it just says the original and they put a sticker over it. I'll try. And... So I can't. Um... I'll try and rip it off while you Okay. Talk. My friend said she's going to try to tear it off because here in Mexico, they put excess fat or excess calories stickers on everything. And so they can is, is, is it fairly low yeah. in fat though? Is it the defatted peanut yeah. butter? There's two, I think the serving size is two tablespoons and it has one gram of fat. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. I, I did find a powdered PB2 with chocolate. So I'll, I'll see how that is. Yeah. Well, I kept finding people, you know, they were making YouTube videos in the States. They would use that powder. And I'm like, I don't have any, you know, and then I found it. Like I said, at this like, yeah, it says, um, I found it. It's, it's PB, it's PB2 powdered peanut butter with chocolate, uh, uh -huh. 50 calories for two tablespoons. So if you had one yeah. tablespoon, 25 calories and two tablespoons is one gram of fat. So, yeah, it's ridiculous. So you have to be really careful, especially if it's one of those trigger foods, but it does taste like. Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> this is pretty yummy. Wow. Uh, Jill wants to know which seeds do you have when you have your seeds? And okay. Amber wants to know if you eat any fruit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, thank you, Amber, for reminding me. Uh, regarding the seeds, if you go to my channel, Lori Neighbor, I'll Never Diet Again, it, there's a little playlist for natural health. And there's a video, and it starts out by saying soaked oats. 
and is the title. And it talks about seed cycling. And I explain how I use the seeds and which seeds. And there's links in that description where you can find information medically about it and uh, just also how to use the seeds. So for myself, because I no longer am ovulating, I'm post-menopause. So the first uh, 14 days of the month, I'm using ground uh, pumpkin and ground flax seeds. And you can use one to two tablespoons. Then the second half of the month, I am using ground sunflower and ground sesame. I was thinking in Spanish. Uh, so I typically only need one tablespoon, uh, two tablespoons, especially with the flax is too much. I'll start having hot flashes. So you can kind of uh, regulate yourself by how you feel. And it does help give me more energy. So no, it's okay. It's yeah, we couldn't it's get it's the sticker off of this brand. That's okay. It, the, 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 the point is, is it's very easily findable on Amazon. It, it, it might be the same brand. It might not be the same brand. Lori says 53. She looks amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then the other friend, the other gal, Amber, I think asked about fruit. Yeah, Aaron wanted to know if you eat fruit because you were, I, what were you, you're a cheating fruitarian. I do eat fruit. So it just depends sometimes, uh, you know, like I'll have an apple or a banana, like Chef AJ was saying, put a banana in my oatmeal or I'm wanting strawberries in my, my oat cereal or grapes or, you know, just, so I would try to gauge myself. Maybe if I was trying to lose weight, I would try to limit, limit myself to like a cup of fruit or cup of, or two of fruit a day. But, uh, if you're maintaining, I, I don't think it's that big, but I don't think it's that big of a deal if you're just maintaining, do you? What do you mean? As far as how much fruit people. I, I, yeah. I don't think people have to worry about that at all. And then I'm also using, you know, well, juices technically, if you're trying to lose, you don't want to be drinking juices either because that's a lot of uh, concentrated sugar calories. Yeah, and you right. don't have the fiber to, to make you feel satiated. Right. But I do like to put some lime juice in my water. I do enjoy that. That's okay. And one of the things I love when I go to Mexico is they take a raw jicama and they put lime juice yes. and, and chili powder on it. It's yes. fantastic. It's like fries, <laughs> but they're not cooked fries. Oh, I love, I love that. Yeah. When I was doing the, the lettuce wraps, I was eating a lot of jicama too. Delicious and crunchy. Does anyone else have any more questions? Let me look. Well, there was a question about like when you kind of let dairy slip back in, like how much did you let slip in? And I mean, because was it from the restaurant food or then you, you actually started getting, you know, that's, you know, that stuff's bad, right? 10 pounds. Yeah. When you think about nearly 10 pounds from Thanksgiving to New Year's from letting dairy back in, I was making the stuff. I was buying, uh, you know, like butter and the whipped cream. And I was making, like I said, I was making cheesecake for my family. I was making uh, cookies and, uh, you know, the traditional, my traditional croissants are full of butter. Uh, yeah. So did you find, yeah, she found it. It's only $5, PB2. Yeah, she found yeah so it is PB2. Lori says, do you use tofu or other soy in your diet to help with hormones? No, I personally don't. I would think that uh, soy is more estrogenic. It's, it's going to be higher in estrogen, but it's also super fattening. So in my freezer outside, I do have those edamame pods, but because they're fattening, um, I probably will, you know, depending on, I don't want to just eat one or two. I want to eat the whole little bag. I'm going to gain, I'm going to gain some weight by eating it. So I personally don't really mess with it. I, because I, I do like unprocessed and I, uh, I, I even made myself tofu one time, uh, just to figure out how to make it from scratch. And, um, but no, I just, I don't really eat much tofu, but that doesn't mean that it's not right for other people, but it's just not my, my go-to. I love potatoes. <laughs> I love potatoes. I can have, um, pasta every once in a while too, but, uh, my thing that I just love and I just don't get tired of it is the potatoes and it's a the white potatoes that we have down here, they, they have, they're very, very thin skin. So I don't have to worry about peeling them. I eat the whole thing. 
Do you have my favorite sweet potatoes? That you, can you find those in Mexico? The Japanese or the Hana or the Murasaki? Do they have those at all? No. So if sometime I can get up north when you're in Tecate, you'll have to bring me some. I could actually, because um, I think I'm allowed to bring them in. I, it's, it's that you can't take them out. I think is it, it, it is if I remember correctly. You say I didn't. I didn't even think about that. I always forget, or or maybe if they're cooked, you can bring them in. I, I always forget. I always check before I go. But yeah, I because I don't see those sweet potatoes there either. When I go to Rancho La Puerta, they only have the orange ones. Uh huh. But it would be great. I know that's something I I am interested in trying, but I I don't have it here. And I got some sweet potatoes the other day, but you know sometimes the sweet potatoes have a funny flavor to it, or they're they're kind of off. A little bit so i'm like oh, okay i got one that was off i'm gonna go back to the white potatoes it could be the time of year i'm not really sure why it was kind of didn't taste quite right yeah sometimes they have like a almost like a floral like i, I don't know if they're old but i know what you mean every now and then you get one that's off it's kind of rancid <laughs> gotta get them fresh gotta get them fresh uh-huh Let's see um Bella says, I just recently learned about the dangers of acrylamides from air fried potatoes. Any input? I just never worry about that because I think I think people need to be more worried about eating oil and animal products and dairy. Um, oh, I've never heard of that. Yeah, but uh, I, I air fry every day and I'm just fine. <laughs> I think it's more when, 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 uh, you know, because you, when you cook things at, at higher temperatures and the browning, they, they, you know, uh, whoever oh. they say, you know, we have to worry about it, but I don't worry about that. And I don't worry. What about rice? Do you eat rice? Cause I, I eat white rice and I don't worry about that either. I had some rice last week. I find from my digestive tract, it takes a little bit longer to move its way through, <laughs> but other than that, yes, I can absolutely have rice. Yeah, I love rice. Jordan says, Lori, what type of exercise do you do to help to maintain your weight loss? Hi, it's Jordan. Jordan, that's yeah. My little friend Jordan. Hi. Uh, I walk. I try to walk 30 minutes a day. And that is, and I like to swim. And when I can, I like to go scuba diving. And I scuba diving, just uh, snorkeling. Nice. Nice. Okay. Da, 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 da. Oh, uh, Monica says, do you eat beans? Yes, that's a good question. We're well, in Mexico. That's a, it's like a national staple. I like black beans the best. They're, they seem to be the easiest for me to digest. Uh, the Peruvian beans are really, really good too. But I seem to, I, I seem to digest the, the black beans better. And uh, with the black beans, I like to uh, try to make tacos with them, like with tortillas in the morning for breakfast. I have videos of me making that uh, as I vlog. Uh, then I put some Cholula sauce or some Valentina sauce on it and have that for breakfast. And I would eat like three or four of those while I was losing weight even. And then when I wanted, felt like my, maybe I was trying to kind of switch things up, I backed off on the tortillas. So I hadn't been eating tortillas for a couple of months, but I'm eating them again. And, um, then I also like to kind of make a bean soup out of it. And I just use the, the broth that's in the beans when I'm making them because I make them from scratch in my Instant Pot. And then I like to put cumin and garlic powder, onion powder, some salt, a little bit of salt and the pepper and the uh, sauce, like a cholula sauce. And it's, you know, there's times when I'm just craving that. And so I just enjoy it. Nice. Do you ever make your own hot sauce? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, we, we had an episode with Chef Kelly Williamson, who's going to be on the show Sunday, made it. And it's, it's not that hard. I, I mean, I don't do it, but it's, it's doable. Uh huh. Yeah, I don't know. That's one. The, some of the condiments that other than ketchup and, uh, you know, making a substitute for mayonnaise, making a cashew mayo or something like that, or, or a chipotle sauce from cashews you made a fabulous salsa oh she yeah my friend i have a friend who's magnificent she really liked my green salsa that i made made yeah. re recently and that'll be one of the latest videos that i put out it was with the, the little green tomatillo the little green tomatoes yeah. and uh cilantro and yeah do you know that the tomatillos also come in purple 
No, I didn't realize that. They're fabulous. They look and taste the same, but they're prettier because they're purple. Somebody actually sent me some through the mail. I thought that was so cool. Oh. Question, does Lori eat two or three meals a day and are potatoes typically included in both lunch and dinner? Well, I graze. So I like, I am a pretty lazy um, cook <laughs> and I like one pot meals. And so I have been dividing my, uh, my non-starchy veggies and kind of steaming them so they're um, not as cooked. They, I don't want them to be mushy because if you have mushy overcooked vegetables, they actually add more calories to your diet. So uh, anyway, so I just graze. I'm grazing. I don't, um, I'm not very traditional as far as like, I'm going to sit down like we, you know, we did growing up as traditional families. I really do just graze. So I'll make up my food, like I make my food up today, and then I'll just graze on it. Nice. And I like to stop, yeah, I like to stop eating by six because that just makes it easier for me to be able to get to sleep and have things calm down in my digestive tract and all that. Nice. Here's a question from Beth. Can you explain why soybeans are fattening? Uh, because the package says they are, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the calorie density is appropriate. It's less than 600 a pound. It's just that they're higher in fat than all the other legumes. Yeah. There's very few, um, th things that are in the produce world that are fattening. So we have, uh, basically coconut meat, avocados, and soybeans are the ones that, and you know, nuts and seeds. Those are pretty much the high fat content foods that are whole foods. Okay, here's a question from Amy. And Amy, thank you so much for all the, Amy sends me stuff like hats and earrings and that's Aww. so nice of you. I, I think you put your phone number this time. I'm going to give you a call if that's okay. She goes, why are rice cakes bad? Is it just, it's just puff rice, too processed. So again, I don't look at things as good and bad. I look at things as either compliant or non-compliant and also good, better, best. And so Amy, relatively speaking, Rice cakes are fairly low in calories. If you eat one, it's like, I don't know, 30, 40 calories. The thing is, is I would encourage you to put in Google something called the hierarchy of grains, Brenda Davis, where she does a talk about the difference between eating the grain whole, like you would in rice or grinding it into a flour or puffing it because the calorie density of rice cakes is much greater than rice. You know, it's like, for example, Corn is 500 calories per pound. Popcorn is 1800 calories per pound. Corn tortillas are about 1100 calories per pound. But also if you look at doc, Dr. Well, she's like a doctor, Brenda Davis's YouTube about the hierarchy of grains. She talks about how the rice cakes is very high glycemic. And so it's not that they're bad because it's better than eating a cheeseburger, but if your goal is weight loss or if you're struggling with food addictions, I don't know if it's the best thing. I did find some very clean rice cakes at Rayleigh's from Lundberg Farms and they're organic and they, uh, they're made literally the only ingredient is brown rice. They're small and square. And I have them. I eat, like if I get a stomach ache and I just can't get my white rice, like I will have them for that reason. But also most people just don't eat a plain rice cake. They need something on it, like the salt or the peanut butter. So I guess it just depends. Do you eat rice cakes, uh, Lori? I, I don't. I don't. I just, if I wanted a snack, I would probably make myself some some baked fries. Yeah. I, I and mean, to me, that's, that's a better snack anyway, potatoes over rice any day. Yes. And, and stand in hope. And by the way, stand in hope, congratulations. They said they were a star McGoogler, the calorie density of rice cakes. I was going to guess 1800 is at six, one, six, seven, one calories per pound. So yeah. Uh, Francine says, Lori is beautiful. I love her smile. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm going to show you a picture of some before and after pictures. Let's see if this comes out. You can see it on there. Yeah, that's like 60 pounds there difference. So, but I owe it to Chef AJ because I could have lost the weight and then the, what, what I, with what I was doing, but would I've, would I've maintained it? Would I've known how to get it back off when I experimented on myself? Would I be able to maintain it? And because Chef AJ taught me initially to gear up to eat two pounds of non-starchy vegetables a day. That was, that was huge. That was, it made a huge impact on 
my health and my weight loss, and then to reintroduce those starches, which are so satiating, so fulfilled, you know, they fill you up, they make you feel great and uh, they heal us, they heal our bodies. So thank you so much, Chef AJ. Oh, you're really- so welcome. Well, well, that's really the secret. You know, Dr. Alan Goldhammer is going to be on the show Saturday. And if you have questions, you've got to send them in. We can't take questions from the chat when we have a doctor on like Dr. Goldhammer Saturday or Dr. McDougall Monday, because we just get too many and the chat disappears too quickly. But he's always said to me, show me an overweight person and I'll show you someone who is unwilling. He says unwilling, not unable to eat enough raw salad and steamed vegetables. So really when, when you find yourself gaining weight or not losing weight, you got to look at the amount of vegetables to start you're eating, because if you up those veggies. You don't want to ever eliminate starch, but generally it's because people aren't eating enough vegetables or they're eating something else. Like in your case, restaurant food or dairy. You know, it's funny because I didn't know that you you gained weight when I asked you to be back on the show. I just sometimes like to follow up with people, but I, I, I hear that a lot from people that I'll just text out of the blue and they'll be like, oh boy, I busted. Like I'm not, I'm not doing it on purpose or it's so funny. Like at least this, this used to happen a lot in LA. Like I would go to Costco because I, it, it, you know, I chopped there because they have a lot of organics and things. And I would run into either former students or people that were in my program or other chefs that have taken my class and like I'd run into them. They'd have like these big old bottles of olive oil in their cart, oh, like oh. a deer in the headlights. And it's like, I, I just have a, I have a habit of showing up when, <laughs> when doing that. So I had no idea that, that you had a, um, a weight gain. Where do you send doctor questions? Well, the, what you do is you sign up to be on my mailing list at chefaj.com and we send you an email every week and then you send it back to us with the question. If you're already not on the list, um, you can try sending it to help at chefaj.com. But the best way is to respond to the email because that, that it goes in a nice little place. So are you familiar with Dr. Goldhammer, Lori, and his work? Absolutely. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah, he been, cracks. He cracks. Been the best that really have are, you know, all the interviews that you do with, with the, the greatest doctors at plant-based doctors that help us reverse diseases and help us with our weight. You know, I really appreciate all of your work. So have you inspired anybody in Mexico? Like, I don't know, like if you, like if you're, if your husband's the pastor of a church, I'm guessing at least when I've been to Mexico, a lot of the people were diabetic. They had weight challenges. Have you like done anything in the church, like classes or talks to help the people that need it? I'll tell you what's been very helpful. And that's been listening to Dr. Lyle, (laughs) because uh, one of the things is that with all the education that we can get for free and you get, you eventually learn like, okay, this person is sick because they're doing this or they're eating this. And I am, I want to help everybody. And I want, I want to see, I don't want to see them suffer, but I've had to learn, like I said, taking the advice of Dr. Lyle to in some ways, don't try, (laughs) don't try, don't try to convince anybody, just live my life as an example. And then if they want to come to me and they want to ask, I can, I actually have given out so many books of the, the color book from Dr. McDougall. It's just the easiest way if it's in Spanish, because I'll go to a pastor's meeting and I can't say how many of those I have you know, have given out the link. But unfortunately, uh, what I've learned over the last three years of doing that, doing this is that some people are interested initially because they see that you've lost weight, but unless somebody's in a, a position where they're physically ill and they really don't have anywhere else to turn, a lot of people won't stick with it. And so I myself had been in a place where I would, and I could be pretty sick and I don't want to be sick. So I I had a colitis really bad. I mean, I was on the road to having colon cancer. So I am very careful. And so sometimes I'd say, I would splurge on the, oh, it'll be okay just this month. No, maybe just this month is gonna be too much the next time, because I really think that the organs in our body can heal and we can function, but I think we could also damage ourselves in such a way that uh, you're, you're okay and you can maintain and you're not gonna get worse, but if you put back that junk, start eating that junk again, it could push you over the edge where maybe you can't pull back out of it. So it's not, I don't want to take that risk with my health. So I've experimented on myself enough. And yes, every once in a while I might have a little treat, but a little treat, not the whole month from 
Thanksgiving to New Year's. <laughs> I'm not doing that again. So it, it's not worth the risk. So it, uh, yeah, so I've had support groups and um, I just really learned, especially this year that I'm just not really cut out for administrating support groups, not at this time, but thank goodness we have we have the weight loss mom. We've got Chef AJ that is down there. She's just working herself and she's available and she's really good at it. So take advantage of the fact that you have wonderful people. I mean, how, how could we can get any better than Chef AJ, right? I mean, and we have a class coming up in August with Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle. It's one of our best classes. It's a 30 day class and they each answer questions for like three hours each. It's like a Lyle Goldhammer marathon. It's really one of the best classes that I'm involved with. That's awesome. You know, and as far as uh, support groups too, I just want to mention maybe for somebody this will strike a chord. Maybe you just need, like I did, just one person that was willing to be accountable to you to challenge you and maybe you too or maybe a few ladies could could form a private group on Facebook where you can load your before pictures and you can show each other what you're eating through pictures and then you can hold each other accountable and have a weigh in I'm I know that people say don't weigh because it stresses them out but people uh, that weigh more frequently do keep uh, lose the weight the quickest uh, but anyway so I'm like once a week, or maybe if you just can't stand it once a month, uh, to hold yourselves accountable in that way by saying, yeah, I'm, otherwise, you know, you just get lost in a, in a huge group. And, uh, but I, I just realized it's a great idea, but I'm just not the one that should be administrating it. <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, the way you get in the class is just sign up for my mailing list at chefaj.com. And as soon as registrations open, you will get an email. That's awesome. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Linda says, I am a fat person who does eat greens and salads, have lost 66 pounds so far. So I guess Dr. Goldhammer must realize some of us are in the process of shedding pounds towards our healthy or ideal weight. I don't think he was necessarily talking about you specifically. I think he was talking in generalities that um, most overweight people that stay overweight are eating very little foods in general that are lower in caloric density. So anyway, that's that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. My arms look amazing, <laughs> says Jordan. Do I lift weights? No, I wish I did. I do really need to add that to my thing. That's the one thing like Lori, I can exercise, but man, the weight training, it's just so boring. I want to lift some weights. Uh, I'd like to do more, but unfortunately I, I, it appears at some point in my life, I've had a whip flash. And so it's affecting my nerves. So I have some peripheral neuropathy, which is uh, preventing me from lifting weights, but I'd like to firm up my, I'd like to firm up my guns, but um, I'm just having to put that off for right now. So walking is my walking and swimming is what I can do. Nice. Yeah. Cause somebody commented, you had a beautiful pool behind you built in exercise. Yeah, that's, and that is just a therapeutic pull for my back because I have some spine, uh, spine issues. So it's not very deep. It's just waist, waist deep. And then it's just for exercises. And I will say that my husband hand dug that pool because he loves me. <laughs> that's so nice. Do, do, does your, does your family eat relatively healthfully or do they just do their own thing? That's a good point, okay? Because a lot of people say, I can't do this because nobody else in my house does it. I'm pretty much the only person that I know in my circle that eats this way. And everybody else is just watching me do it. And nobody is giving me a hard time. Maybe they did at first. I can remember going to tacos the first time with my family and my son was like laughing. This is like, you're just going to eat bean tacos? Like that just was so foreign to him that I wasn't going to have any of the meat on it but it's the sauces that makes it taste good and I was perfectly happy I had the flavor there because I had the sauces so sometimes we go out for tacos and I'll just you know if they don't even have there's sometimes taco stands that don't have beans and I'll just say well if I want it let me have a tortilla that's not warmed up in grease and let me just put some salsa on there and I get the flavor and I'm happy nice. so I uh yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm doing this on my own. And I, I know that there's a, a few in our community that are plant-based and uh, 
there are maybe a few people that are trying to eat, you know, this, this way strictly because they're trying to reverse diseases, but I haven't actually met them in person, but I do know that they are out there through, through Facebook. Right. Okay. Here is a great question from Arlene. Do you remember how you talked about originally you had this person, like an accountability person that when you both were 50, 60 pounds heavier, you wanted, she wanted to go and lose weight. What happened to her? She did keto and she's still the same size. Interesting. And you can believe me, I try to influence her. I love her and I, I don't want to see her suffering with some of her health issues, but I just, you have to be at a place where you're respectful of others' decisions and where they're at. And um, I just, just love her and she's still my friend. I, I mean, I appreciate it because this is, it was the catapult to where I'm at now. And I'm so, so much happier now. Yeah. What spine issues do you have? Which what? What spine issues do you have? Spine, oh, back? back? Oh, I played hard when I was younger. Uh, we lived in Northern California. I'm from originally from Redding. And Mount Shasta is up north. It's a beautiful, the largest um, mountain in California. And uh, went skiing. When I was 18, I fell on the back of my head and hit my tailbone. And then I, when I was older, I, we had quads, quad, um, yeah, you know, four wheelers. And I was overweight and was trying to show off to my kids. And I thought I could ride the quad and jump it like a sea do, you know, the, the watercrafts. And when I came down, my spine went like this. So I had, a, I have several herniated, well, they were herniated, just, they now just slip around. And also from having an epidural from one of my kids, it ruins your spine, ruins your disc. So mm. do you do any like kind of stretching or anything for it? Or I use an inversion table, which you hang upside down and, uh, and also using pull, you know, water therapy helps a lot nice. and water. <laughs> okay. Very good. Well, Lori, if people want to follow you, where should they go? They can find me on YouTube at Lori Neighbor, Neighbor just like next door, N-E-I-G-H-B-O-R. I'll never die it again. And it, you know, I'm not hugely famous or anything. So it might pop up with Chef AJ and hope, I think there's a link in the description how to get over to the, the YouTube channel. And also on Facebook, the same thing, Lori Neighbor, I'll never uh, die it again. And also on uh, Instagram. Oh, I'll have to find your Instagram link because um, what, what's your Facebook? Because I could only find your personal Facebook page. It's Lori Neighbor. I'll never die it again. And I, I, I'm not very, I'm not very techy. So if I'm supposed to do something else to it, I don't really know what to do. No so, worries. Well, thank you for being a good neighbor. Thank you for having me, Chef AJ. Well, for let's me. check in again so that you okay. don't have another little accidental slip. Yeah, I'm not going to experiment on myself like that anymore. But yeah. hey, I you can do it. Otherwise, you're not going to know, right? Yep. You know what I call it? I call it a snack accident. A snack accident was a big one. A snack accident. Okay. So says she loved this one. Uh, where in Mexico do you live? Judith wants to know. Oh, we live in the state of Jalisco, where the mariachis are from, near Guadalajara. Nice, nice. Guadalajara. <laughs> well, great catching up with you, Lori. Thanks so much for coming back. It's a pleasure. You take care of yourself. Bye-bye, everybody. And take Bye. Lori's lead. Eat potatoes, guys. And thanks so much for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my show is one hour later at noon because the guest couldn't make it sooner. Her name is Michelle Vilsack. She works with the NHA, the National health association she'll be talking about their work but also doing a cooking demo making pineapple chickpea hawaiian haystacks and i also have a show today at two o'clock thomas allen from california balsamic making food have you ever tried the california balsamic Lori? can you get those in mexico just a few that a friend brought down for me i can't get them oh well you have to guys do so much you know all the plant-based cookbooks they the really good ones they'll have that in there and i don't i can't i don't have access to it they, once I've tried, I really liked the pear. That was delicious. Really good. If you ever cross the border, we'll get you some. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. it so much. Take care. Take Thanks, care. everyone.